Welcome to the South African Civil Society Information Service. I'm Fazila Farouk in Johannesburg. We've all heard about how important inflation targeting is for the health of our economies. But inflation targeting is a hotly contested monetary policy instrument. In fact, since the 2008 financial crash, the debate around inflation targeting has increased. Some economists have gone as far as to say that inflation targeting died when Lehman Brothers died. Are they correct to hold this view? But is inflation targeting a one-size-fits-all solution for all economies? What are the implications for inflation targeting in relation to emerging economies? Helping us to make sense of these issues today is Salim Fakir. Salim is the head of the Living Planet Unit at the World Wildlife Fund and he also has had a regular column at Saxis for many, many years. Welcome to Saxis. Thank you Salim. very much. It's a pleasure. Now, Sari, increasing numbers of economists have been calling for a debate on inflation targeting. Right. Tell us, firstly, what is inflation sure. targeting and what are the elements surrounding the debate on inflation targeting. Okay. Why is there such a furor around it at the moment? So let me give a, a bit of context for <coughs> how inflation targeting originated. So when uh, in the past, uh, when we had the uh, Bretton Woods system, uh, where people call the uh, Bretton Woods system one, uh, most uh, currencies were fixed uh, to the dollar and the dollar was uh, uh, linked to, to gold. And then in the 70s, um, the uh, gold standard was removed and we moved to more floating currencies. And I think governments tried to look for ways in which to manage uh, currency depreciation or, or appreciation. And they needed something to anchor that on. Um, so inflation targeting originated actually in around 1991 uh, when New Zealand, uh, New Zealand Central Bank uh, began to implement inflation targeting. And the idea is really to find a mechanism, a monetary mechanism, uh, to maintain price stability in the economy. And by price stability, I mean finding ways to uh, manage uh, the, the ebb and flow of, in, of inflation, because it's, uh, inflation is a result of many factors. And to try to have a long-term view on, on inflation, uh, what the New Zealand government did is try to create a range in which uh, they could try to manage inflation. So for example, in South Africa, we impl implemented inflation targeting in uh, 2000, and the idea was to keep uh, a band or a range between 3 to 6% to manage uh, inflation. Now, post-2008, of course, the, there was a financial crisis, and you know what has happened with the financial crisis. Uh, uh, and so questions began to be raised about the role of uh, monetary policy, the role of central banks, and one of the things that was attacked uh, is inflation targeting uh, because it tended to restrict the way government spent and also in a way uh, inflation targeting tended to impose austerity uh, in, in the way government spent because uh, following the crisis uh, people were looking at growing uh, and uh, uh, reigniting uh, growth in the economy. So. I think there's a big debate about uh, whether inflation targeting is the right tool, should central banks be using that, or are there other things that in the economy that need to be dealt with, uh, and uh, uh, is, is it just about inflation targeting or is there something more deeper uh, that we, look at, uh, we need to look at? So I think in summary, uh, the, the, just to point out as well, I think that uh, uh, there are 195 countries in the world, or, or close to 200. Uh, about uh, close to 30 countries uh, uh, implement uh, inflation targeting in the strict sense of the definition. You could argue that uh, some countries like Switzerland and Germany have some form of inflation targeting, although they're not explicit about it. For a long time, the U.S. never explicitly uh, had a policy on inflation targeting until uh, when Beninke, Ben Beninke came uh, on board, uh, introduced it in 2011. I would argue that, uh, so, so uh, the main, main thing uh, around it is really uh, to recognize that uh, inflation targeting is one of the instruments available uh, for central banks uh, to manage uh, uh, price stability in the economy. 
And what is the debate around inflation targeting in South Africa specifically? Sure. There, there was a period uh, about a year or two ago where um, the, particularly the unions and so on uh, questioned the role of the central bank and uh, one of the things that was attacked is inflation target and might have arisen out of the article that Joseph Stichlitz wrote where he basically said it's the end of the era for inflation targeting if I may sort of crudely summarize uh, that and what he was commenting on is firstly he was uh, pointing to a couple of things uh, the relationship of central banks and financial crisis and instability the second thing is uh, the rise in food and uh, food inflation and oil price hikes and essentially he was saying that inflation targeting is a useless tool against that and it, it's partly true because I think uh, if it, whether it's inflation targeting or not I think central banks would struggle to uh, deal with external shocks um, in the short term uh, although I, I would say that um, I would say that that uh, his argument uh, is probably political polemic which was picked up um, uh, by many people but he did raise fundamental issues about uh, uh, what do central banks do in a period of crisis? Uh, do they stick to the old tools or do they use unconventional uh, tools to fix uh, problems? The uh, central banks then have to play a more active role in relationship to uh, the government, which is the treasury. And I think this is really what uh, I think uh, Stiglitz was talking about and I think what was picked up in the political debate is that uh, central banks were too conservative, They uh, try to focus too much on inflation targeting and not look at other uh, factors in the economy. Uh, people talk about uh, nominal GDP as another tool, uh, etc. Uh, other people are talking about uh, completely heterodox tools of um, if there's a, a complete uh, disinflation, in, in other words, uh, inflation is coming down, it's reaching levels of zero, you need to look at other tools uh, to, to fix the problem. So, so before you move yeah. on, is the South African Central Bank uh, looking at other tools? Does it need to, or is it too focused on inflation targeting? I think there's a, uh, at the moment I think the Central Bank in South Africa is very focused on inflation targeting because it's the only thing, it seems to me, uh, that uh, they, uh, they are probably more risk averse uh, and so don't want to move into new instruments and tools uh, that uh, perhaps they're not comfortable with. Uh, so I think there's a broader conversation to be had because in, f in, in this country how inflation targeting works is that you've got the Minister of Finance who determines the, the policy but the actual policy instrument and the independence to apply that at, at discretionary level is actually uh, the Reserve Bank Governor. Uh, and so the Reserve Bank Governor, uh, in a sense, would just apply uh, a, a policy tool or uh, instrument based on a conversation with the Minister of Finance. So I think uh, there needs to be a two-way conversation between uh, the Treasury and the Central Bank in uh, how to deal with uh, underlying issues about lack of growth uh, and so on. So some economists would argue that, uh, that, uh, that inflation targeting uh, maybe uh, when you talk about fiscal spend, uh, it, it imposes a conservative uh, approach within uh, the Treasury because if you were to increase uh, the level of fiscal spend and, and the debt level, uh, that would push inflation up. So th uh, and it would de definitely then create a, such a momentum within the central bank where they would try to uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, push up uh, interest rate and try to uh, push down uh, the inflation rate. So cr crystallize the issue for us. Why should the average person on the street care about inflation targeting? I think there are two main aspects of inflation targeting. The one is that is inflation targeting really causing price stability? Um, and uh, in that way it is helping to tame inflation, which because inflation would eat at the income of ordinary people, or is inflation targeting keeping a constraint on an economy that actually n has potential to grow, uh, and so, uh, you know, uh, the relationship of inflation targeting and other uh, activities of the Treasury in terms of fiscal spend and that, 
uh, needs to be more relaxed and there should be, if you want, uh, a more focus on, on uh, uh, central bank uh, through uh, uh, probably dual targets of inflation targeting and also uh, GDP uh, uh, targeting, a nominal GBD, GDP targeting as they call it uh, technically, uh, that that leads to a more positive outcome. Uh, I'm not sure the answers are, are very easy, but uh, I think that uh, it's fair to say that perhaps uh, we have taken a far more conservative uh, 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 role in the way we, we have tr uh, managed the economy. Uh, and some people may say it's leading to good and other people may say it's actually uh, leading to lack of growth and uh, that lack of growth is not creating it. Where uh, are you on that continuum? I, I think that um, I think there are two things. I think that uh, uh, the it's not just about the role of the treasury, but the the way in which the government uh, capacity to uh, activate and, and enhance economic activities is important. That's a, a internal capacity issue within government. The way they spend their money uh, and the spending is go going to the right places and the allocation is happening to the right types of activities. I think that that relationship between, uh, if you want more f uh, availability of more money to be able to be spent in the economy, uh, is not just about saying you must increase the debt uh, levels and so the fiscal spend must be higher, but it's also about uh, the availability of more money to be spent has to be utilized in the right way. I think perhaps in that middle part is where the biggest challenge lies in South Africa. The second part of that, you can't also just have a government having fiscal spend that only uh, uh, benefits private interests. There has to be a balance between uh, an end goal and uh, uh, an outcome that benefits a broader society through increasing growth. Uh, so there's obviously uh, the employment subsidy uh, that uh, uh, the government is looking at many other ways in which they're trying to, to do that. So. I think th the tricky part is not just about saying we're going to increase the fold of uh, money available by the Treasury for, for spending, but is that spending going to the right places? Is it being used? Is it governed well? Uh, is it allocated in the right parts of the economy? And is it creating the right behavior uh, by other economic agents that there, there's no rent seeking and abuse of that? Uh, where it leads to no positive economic outcome. Thank you very much for joining us at Saks this It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. And thank you to our viewers and listeners for joining us at the South African Civil Society Information Service. Remember, if you want more social justice news and analysis, you can get that at saxis.org.za.